Hi, welcome back to MEN 368. We are now looking at design of shafts. Up to now, we have kind of danced around it. I kept telling you, you know, you have to do, you have to do shaft design by doing steps and this, that and the other. Now we are at a stage where we are really going to look at a full shaft design. In order to do this, we have to be able to find deflections and things like that for stepped shafts. And for that, we are going to use the Excel program that I have built. So we are really not going to do the details of the calculation, but I need you to understand how the process works. Okay. And we will do the, all the shear force bending moment calculations and stress calculations and so on will be done by Excel. Okay. So uh, uh, this program, this Excel program, I wrote myself, so I don't give you any guarantees about it. I will give you the Excel program, but caveat emptor. That is, you know, it is really not a safe program in the sense that it really does not check for strange things. If you do bad things with it, you will get crazy answers. Okay. So there is some, I mean, this is not a commercial program. You know what I mean? This is just something that I, that I wrote so that we can do our problems well. Okay. So here is the deal. <clears throat> we have this shaft. Okay. And the loads, this is actually a belt drive. You can see in the picture that this is a belt drive. So there's a belt drive. And as I mentioned with regard to belt drives, actually for belt, belt drives are used when you want to transmit things that are far away. You use gears when things are very close and you want tight stuff. You use V belts for slightly higher stuff, but typically belt drives are used when you want to transmit torques over long distances. In this case, you can see I have 10 inches, 18 inches, 12 inches, so on. So these gaps are huge. We have to decide uh, what kind of bearings we want to use. And how big should the shaft be? Or in this particular case, it is given that the shaft dia is one, one and one fourth uh, inch. And we are going to redo this whole problem in a proper way. Okay. Once we have an idea of how this thing works, then we can go off and uh, design some of these things. Okay. Of course, we have to make certain assumptions because that's all we can do at this stage. So the first thing to know is, okay, we keep saying that if you have uh, bearings and shafts, there is some restrictions on def deflections. Up to now, I have not told you what those restrictions are. I mean, this is again one of the nice things about the about Shigley's book. Uh, you know, what it has is all this information in a nice tabulated form. And the table is given here. I want you to see that different kinds of ball bearings have different amounts of uh, slope restrictions. So if you use roller bearings, can you see that the slope restrictions are stringent? 0 0.0005 radians. So you can, the, the, the place where you put a tapered roller bearing, you cannot have more than, uh, more than that much uh, uh, slope change. On the other hand, if you go to ball bearings, slope restrictions are pretty mild. If you go to spur gears, slope, you know, transverse deflections are in the order of 0 0.01 inches. So if it deflects by more than that much, you are in trouble. Belt drives on the other hand are extremely forgiving. It can deflect quite a bit and you're okay. So in our problem, we are going to look at a, our bearings are going to be spherical ball bearings. Hey, why? Because I just wanted to pick something later. We'll see in a, in a different class, you'll see how to pick the appropriate bearing. But if you pick a tapered ball bearing, it tells you that the maximum allowable slope is in the order of 0 0.026 to 0 0.052 radians. You can see there's quite a bit of this one will pick something in the lower end, 0 0.026. And I need you to understand that in many cases, these are the kinds of things that you have to decide. Okay. Because nobody will give you an exact number and say, use it. You have to choose your own deal. So you want to say, okay, you know, this is a ball bearing that I don't really want huge maintenance. So I want to make sure it doesn't deflect a lot. Okay. So that's it. As far as the ball bearing goes, we don't care about the gears because this is a belt drive. So I'm only interested in that. So I, our decision is based on a very simple thing. What is the slope at the two ends? This is what we really need to find out. So first thing to do is to do a shaft layout. So let us see if we can do a shaft layout. So what happens is I'm going to start out here and I'm going to say, okay, here is a, here is the first piece on which the bearing is going to sit. So I'm going to mark my bearing like that. And then I will need a step so that I can put the bearing there. And then I'm going to have a shaft. I mean, I'm going to have this particular gear. So the gear, I mean, sorry, the belt drive comes like that. 
and then so this go this will go through there and then there will be <coughs> another step for me to position the belt right it goes all the way down i'm going to have a down step for this for this gear right and i'm going to have another step <coughs> for the other bearing so my shaft design looks like this of course i will have to put some grooves and other things here to lock them so for example i may have to lock this thing i may have to lock this and then i have to put a groove here to lock it so there are minor things so steps or major features uh, grooves or minor features typically steps the major features are decided by deflection considerations the minor features are decided by um uh, manufacturing plus uh, fatigue considerations so in our case we have the following setup and first of all we need to find out what the two tensions are and we know how to do that the net torque so if i draw the end and, and we have done this before so i'm going to do this kind of fast so i'm going to draw the end view and by the way the end view you have to do uh the computer program that i have will not will not actually calculate the torques by itself you have to specify it so the end view now i have so this is 8 inch dia that's 10 inch dia this force is 7 is 500 pounds this force is 75 and then the top t2 and then t1 T1 is 0.15 times T2, and this diameter is 10 inches. So what happens is, if I compute, if I compute the net torque, torque equals 500 minus 75 times 4, which is let us see. uh 425 times 4 which is 2 for the 8 9 10 0 1 for the 16 1700 inch pounds so this is the torque and so uh that must be equal to t2 minus 0.15 t2 times 5 inches equal to 1700 which implies t2 equals I'm going to do this in, on my calculator uh, or in Excel itself because I want to I want to be able to use this. This is 1700 divided by five uh, divided by 0.85. That is 400 pounds. And then. T1 equals again. I'm going to do this here. So that's equal to 400 times 0.15, 60 pounds. And just to make sure that the calculations are right, 400 minus 60 is 340 times. Five equals zero. Five to the ten zero one. Five to the fifteen sixteen hundred. I'm off by a hundred somehow. So let's make sure that the calculations are right. So seventeen hundred divided by point five divided by point eight five is T two. And T one is four hundred times point one five. So that is sixty. So four hundred. Oh, sorry, that is seventeen hundred. My calculation skills are not what they used to be. That is seventeen hundred. That's correct. So this is correct. So four hundred and sixty pounds. So now I'm going to redraw this figure. So my beam looks like this. This is the z direction. This is the y direction. 
this is the x direction at this point there is a torque that goes that way and it is 1700 pounds and there is a net force that is coming out that way which is uh, uh, 500 plus 75 which is um, 500 plus 75 is 575 pounds and then at this point there is a force that goes that way and a torque that goes that way the force is uh, 460 and then there is a bearing here and there is a bearing there so this is equivalent to this notice now what i did was actually moved all the forces down to the to the bar and whenever the forces are off axis i found out the torque on the bar okay once i have this now i can use my program so let us look at our steps so i have step number 1 step number 2 step number 3 step number 4 step number 5 so this is the number of steps of course i have drawn the steps exaggerated okay so these are the steps in the bar so there are 1 2 3 4 5 steps sorry 4 steps because this is one end this is the bearing this is the bearing okay and there is a force here we don't exactly know where the force is so i'm going to put it up here i'm going to put a force up there so the distance is given to us 10 inches so let's assume because i don't know any better i'm going to assume this this is one inch um, this is one inch this is eight inches so eight plus one plus one uh, is ten eight plus one nine nine plus one ten this is another 14 inches Sorry, 18 inches and then I'm going to assume this gap is 1 inch, this gap is another 1 inch and then the remaining stuff is 10 inches here. So let us see where are the steps. The steps are at x equal to 1 inch there is a step, at x equal to uh, 8 plus 1, 9 plus 1, 10 inches there is a step. And then at x equal to 10 plus 18, 28 inches there is a step. At x equal to 28 plus 11, 39 inches there is a step. Okay, so those are the steps. The total length of the beam, length is 40 inches. Okay, so we have this information. Also, we know that between x equal to 0 and x equal to 1, there is no force. No force in this section. And then x equal to 1 to x equal to 10. In that section, there is a force at x equal to 9. There is a torque which is 1700 pounds. And then there is a force which is in the z direction of 57 pounds. And then between these two, there is nothing. Between these two, let us see, uh, 10, 28, 29. At x equal to 29, the torque is minus 1700 pounds and the force Fz is minus 460 pounds. Notice I didn't calculate the reaction forces because my computer program will do that. We are going to take a pause here because we are going to complete it later. But this is the idea. Okay. So our next step is to enter it all this data into our computer program and off we go. Okay. So we will do that in the next piece.